Well, 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 well. Um, it appears that our good friend Jeff Keeley, host of the Game Awards and host of the up and coming Summer Games Fest, might have a few tricks up his sleeve that may have slipped by a lot of you all's radar, but we caught it here. And I think it's time to talk about it. What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K of Geeks. Art Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dozage, and here at MM2K Gaming with a special video we call this to spill. This is the precursor to our live show. So you're either watching this as a precursor, again, a warm up, a monologue to our live show, or you could be watching this as a separate VOD. And if you're watching it as the latter, stay tuned towards the end because at the end of the VOD version, there will be a card to your left that will take you to our live show that you're not going to want to miss because we talk about this in more detail. And I talk about this with my co-host, Cold Blood Sensei, who really helped me understand what was going on here. So what am I talking about? Let's start here. This is a tweet from somebody that named Apayo, a big time PlayStation enthusiast who talks about the things that are happening at the Summer Games Fest this year or the things not happening. And as we all know, it's no secret, Jeff Keighley is a big time PlayStation enthusiast, right? And and that necessarily isn't a problem with himself, um, but he is a big indicator um, if you're gonna see something big from PlayStation. Normally he's excited when he feels like there's something PlayStation related to be shown and he holds that optimism when there isn't much to be shown. So here's just some of the things that this uh, tweeter Payo was talking about. And think of it, he's, he's, he's created this tweet in the context of, hey, look, we just had the state of play. It was disappointing. Now we got Geoff Keighley trying to kill our excitement over this. I think it's PlayStation related. So listen to this. He says, Geoff Keighley did a Q and A about the Summer Game Fest, confirms no Kingdom Hearts 4. No Wolf Among Us 2. Hype level is 8 out of 10 for this show for him. Has not decided what shoes to reveal, what shows to reveal yet, I think. Um, this show is largely focused on already announced stuff. The show on Friday will be two hours. Um, not focused on games that are way off, like 2026, 2027. And no big one more thing. That's, that, that's kind of huge because there's always a big one more thing. So I, 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 it could be that there is a one more thing, but it's just not big. And maybe he doesn't consider it big because it's not, you know, some either some huge show or something that would prevail on PlayStation, right? So with that being said, a lot of us are questioning, you know, well, why isn't there like really some type of, enthusiasm behind this right because this is the summer's game show jeff and one more thing that cold blood helped me see is that despite all that right despite all that about you now being lukewarm about the show where let's let's look at this again you're lukewarm about the show and and this comes out around here let, let, let's take a look at this this is, this is what they, this is July, I mean, June 3rd, excuse me, where you talk about how lukewarm you are, right? But this is well after Summer Game Fest tickets release. You know what I'm saying? Like May 8th, there was an article that went out that talked about these Summer Game Fest tickets are finally released. And here we go, here you go here. Jeff, you're like, Hey, we have a date. Summer Games Fest live on Friday, June 7th. YouTube Theater in Los Angeles with thousands of in-person fans and millions watching online. A cross-platform live show of what's next for video games. Public tickets are on sale May 7th. So, you're, you're, you know, the way that this is framed, of course, you're going to advertise it and, and, and put some excitement around it, but there was none of that. Hey, just come and check out some games. You know, it's... You know, we're going to show you some stuff. No, there was enthusiasm behind it, right? And something else I want to show you guys, too. It's like, even in the write-ups for this thing, there was way more enthusiasm in, in the write-ups, right? 
I mean, am, am I am I am I missing something here? When you were talking about this, like in the stuff, in the promos and stuff that you would have given to IGN and so forth, there goes an example right here. The Summer Game Fest 2024 date and other info has been revealed. Jeff, Jeff Keeley's Summer Gaming Showcase kicks off with a live stream on June 7th at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific, all the other times, whatever. And quote, new video game announcements and first look trailers are there. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you can read through this whole, we'll have, we'll have links to this in, in the description and so forth. You can read through this and there was no indication, right? This was March 13th, 2024. So after you've had a successful announcement of the tickets going on sale as of May 7th, and all that excitement that you were trying to drum up as a March, you now let people know and look at it, what happened as a result. You look at these ticket sales, everything in gray has already been purchased. This is for the, you, the, the YouTube stage center or wherever it's going to be held, right? And you still, you got a few tickets there that are remaining and let's go out here and you got a few tickets in other places remaining, right? Like you pretty much got this thing sold up. So I'm just asking the question. Did Jeff Keighley just scheme a bunch of gamers over Summer Game Fest? Like, did he sell you guys on a lukewarm Game Fest? Got you all excited? Got you all creamy knuckled? <laughs> I know I'm gross. Got you all excited? Only for it to be for a lukewarm show. I mean, he did say 8 out of 10, but if he thinks that this is an 8 out of 10, I would imagine that he thinks his other shows are 10 out of 10. Like the way he was describing this, even though he said 8 out of 10, it felt like that he was trying to downplay and, and, and curb your enthusiasm so you wouldn't all dogpile on him. And so because of that, someone like myself, I got to ask the question. Why did Jeff Keeley become the arbiter of a showcase in the first place? And like, and, and I want to question even further, like, why do we put so much faith and trust behind him when it comes to presenting games? I mean, the game award show became a big old Google ads type, you know what I'm saying? An AdSense affair where the people winning awards are chewed off the stage after like two and a half seconds and it's become ad after ad after ad of games to line up i would assume jeff's pockets and then now we got another thing going on here where a whole crap load of tickets were sold but then now that the tickets are sold now he's telling me uh you know curb your enthusiasm and it harkens me back to something that I just read that almost had me in tears. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm an old, I'm an older folk. I'm an older guy. And I get emotional now. <laughs> and there's some things that I see that just I gotta wipe back a tear or whatever. And one of the things that happened to me recently that made me do that it was right before I started recording this. It was this article right here. This is an article from GameIndustry.biz uh, where they're talking about E3. Uh, I wish I could get this off of here, but it says, uh, uh, oh, whoops. No, that's, that's, I want to go to his E3 article where he's talking about E3 and he's talking about why E3 is just a huge, huge event that was monumental to the success of video games and why we, you know, we got to understand what happened. Christopher Dring is the writer of it. I was on his, I was on his author's page trying to find a way to tweet him because I had some suggestions. Here goes the article right here, the life and death of E3. It's right there. Um, this big system shock at sucks <laughs> sucks behind but I, I get why some people are doing that and this is a knockout article that talks to you about the nostalgia behind e3 why it was necessary how it took e um, uh, gaming 
out of the jaws of irrelevancy and being blamed for everything by the U.S. governments and really putting it at risk, being shooed away from the Motion Picture Association and stuff like that, how E3 helped propel it. Not just for gamers, but just for for civilization, period. You know what I mean? To make to, to help propel it be the to, to be the number one medium that it is today. I don't feel like Jeff Keeley is doing that. I don't feel like Jeff is helping propel gaming. I feel like that he's feeding you something. He's giving you McDonald's where you might need a well-cooked and balanced meal. He's, 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 he's keeping you fed, but as far as pushing the game community forward, I, 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 I don't feel like he's doing that. So we're going to talk about that. Like we're going to talk about the stewards of gaming things like E3 that are being replaced by the summer games fest and, and how we might be pilfered. And we're going to ask questions again. We're just putting the question out there. We're not going to, I'm not going to front. This looks mighty damn suspicious, but we want to just ask the question. What do you think about all this? Is this a problem? Did you not realize this? This was going on that you know what I'm saying? As far as the tickets and everything or being concerned, or is this is, or is this a nothing burger to you? Come and join us in a row mic check. If you're watching this live, just stay tuned. We're going to be there in a little bit and we're going to have the live discussion soon. Me and cold blood and I, if not, if you're watching this as the VOD again, check out the card to the left. All right. When it pops up at the end of this video, check out the card to the left. It'll bring you to the live show. I want to thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your support. Thank you members. Everything has just been fantastic. And until we see you, until then, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.